1777. Chester, Pennsylvania. not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. President John F. Kennedy, 1961. You're safe. The news. Is it true? Hi, Father. We're badly beaten. Our line collapsed at Brandywine. I saw Lafayette fall, hundreds of others. If the pursuit continues, they'll take Philadelphia tonight. Now, if they're that close, you're not safe. We have a chance if we can reach the Springfield Tunnel. And if not? If not, then we shall give a good account before we're finished. Oh, no, Robert, you've given enough for the cause. Why risk your life in a senseless gesture? What would you have me do? Surrender. An honorable surrender. Father, I dearly love you no matter how we disagree. God protect you, Robert. Where's Jeremy? Is he safe? Your brother? Oh, I never know where he is. Your brother's an impudent scoundrel, if you want to know the truth. Great Jehovah. Here they come. If either of you have doubts, this is the time to speak. Jeremy. Stop talking and command. We wait till they're deep in the stream, and then we convince them we're more than three. Henry, we depend on you. Will the device work? It should. Theoretically. Theoretically. That's comforting. Sure. What's that? They're right in our line of fire. Society, Chester, Pennsylvania. Now get down. What do you think you're doing? We're protecting the army's rear. The three of you? Quiet. Get down.
most kind, sir. What gallant command are you? Why, Pennsylvania's finest. The command of Captain Yankee Doodle. Ah! They'll be, they'll be coming back with dragoons and artillery. We'll be gone by then. That'll take time. Gentlemen, my apologies if I offended you. Offended? Sergeant, do you feel offended? Grateful's more like it, General. General? Come, sir, he's hardly more than 20. About the same as you. You are a Major General. Hey, somebody has to be. Je m'appelle Lafayette. Lafayette? Well, sir... I don't know what to say. I, I, I'm, I'm Jeremy Larkin of Chester. No, my friend. You are a Yankee Doodle. <laughs> <laughs> Escape at nightfall. We'll show you the short way to Springfield Tunnel. So, uh, you're not coming? Sir Chester's our home. Now that it's in British hands, it's where we can best serve. From the gallows? The load of your work, your society. No, sir. The society is secret. We decided long ago that if no one knew, no one could betray us. For our town, like others, is of mixed opinion. Tories, sunshine patriots. But family, friends. They can betray you innocently. No, sir. No one knows. We have pretended indifference to the cause to everyone. Then the real patriots must think you worthless. Aye. It is a burden we accept. But we will serve. Oh. As Sumter and Marion serve in the South. As partisans behind the lines. Come, sir, commission us. Surely we've shown our worth. Of course you have. I cannot risk your lives needlessly. I must confide in you. The cause itself is in its darkest hour. Sir? Jeremy, at Brandywine, the British hurt us badly, perhaps mortally. In one morning, almost without a struggle, they took our most priceless possession, 18 guns of the line, all the artillery we had, it will take months to replace those guns. Without them, we dare not take the field. We must keep running. For how long, no one knows. Well, sir, if it's just a question of getting the guns back, well, that should be simple enough. I beg your pardon. The methodical nature of the British Army makes them quite predictable. Maybe I ought to explain that though Henry has never fought a battle till today, He's read every military book there is, including all the manuals of His Majesty's army. The British procedure in this matter is clearly defined. All captured field pieces are to be collected behind the lines in one designated place. Well, all we have to do is find the place. He's right. And then we get word to you, General, and coordinate a raid to get them back. Oh, dear. It sounds darn near impossible, General, but with them doing it, it could work. Aye. It could work. My friends, you shall have your commission. Five needles, guns. Jeremy, British dragoons, they're coming. Yes, my sir. You shan't find partisans in my barn. Elizabeth! Oh, shame! You, brazen girl! 
please, sir, don't hurt her. It was my fault. Indeed, you scoundrel. Your father will hear this. Get off my land before I mend your character with a horsewhip. Come, you uh, Sir, if it's any consolation, I'm not one of those rebel rascals. Ah! Well said, lad. Well said. Come. We'll give you safe conduct for the farmer's will. Tiago, 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 Tiago. In the part, the war rages around our homes. Your brother suffers the agonies of defeat, and you while away the hours in the Colts' barn. Doing what? Well, sir, sharing the company of Elizabeth. Do you have any idea what I've gone through fearing for your safety? I'm sorry, truly. If I weren't filled with perverse delight at seeing your carcass unharmed, I would thrash you. Yes, sir. Go. Leave me. Go contemplate what it means to stand on the threshold of manhood without a shred of responsibility in your bones. What of Robert, sir? Is he safe? Aye. Thanks to the lunacy of some fanatics at Chester Creek. I'm glad of that. This must be your son. Fletcher Tarleton, Major, His Majesty's Forces. Major Tarleton is being quartered in our home, Jeremy. I see. Well, sir, your dragoons were most courteous to me this afternoon. Yes, I heard about your escapade. In a barn. Fancy that. I'm glad someone found this day agreeable. Agreeable? Yes, sir. Major? Father? Excuse me, sir. But please step outside. It's, uh, it's quite a sight. What are you talking about, Sergeant? Sir, the spoils of war. Indeed. Shall I send them forward to General Howe? No. Suppose we kept them here. Here? Why, sir? Why, Sergeant? To use his bait. Bait to catch a Yankee doodle with. Four pounder is the last. The same guns they paraded in town last night. When did they arrive here? At dawn this morning, I overheard my uncle talking with them. They told him to move into town for safety. They said he could speak freely of the guns in his barn, but not of the company of soldiers who were secretly on guard. It appears the maid just trying to spring a trap. Aye. And attaching a company to do it. That means he's splitting his forces. Very unmilitary. Henry, how much powder do you have left in your hiding place? Half a dozen kegs. Isaac. Those rusted naval cannon in your smithy. Could they be made to fire? If I applied myself? Why? I have an idea to suggest to our friends in Philadelphia. If it's approved, I'll explain on my return. Safe conduct pass? Why? Well, sir, I have to deliver this portrait to the gentleman who commissioned it. In Springfield, west of here. May I count on the pass, sir? Get up in an hour. Actually, I was ready to leave now. You are lying to me, aren't you? Sir? Your trip to Springfield. It's a wench, isn't it? Well, I... <laughs> you have found me out. Pick up your pass. In half an hour. Yes, sir. Sergeant. Yes, sir. 
Follow young Larkin. Make sure he goes to Springfield. Yes, sir. Jeremy Larkin to acknowledge the United States of America to be free, independent, and sovereign states. And I do renounce all obedience or allegiance to George III, King of Great Britain. I swear that I will, to the utmost of my power, support, maintain, and defend the United States against the King and all his adherents, and will serve the United States with fidelity, according to the best of my skill and understanding. So help me, God. That may be the first, sir. Congratulations. And our gratitude for the news you bring. Well, sir, what do you think of our Captain Yankee Doodle? General, it seems my father was right. He is a scoundrel. We are a scoundrel. But as he said at Chester Creek, Pennsylvania's finest. How do I thank you? You saved our lives. I just thought you'd look odd with a bayonet in your backside. Besides, who else would there be to lead the Army's part of our raid? He is the man, isn't he, General? He wouldn't be if my leg were well. But as it is, I can't think of a better choice. Then it's settled. When do we strike? It can't be soon enough. The Congress fled Philadelphia this morning. And we abandon her within the hour. Sir, I... I... By nightfall, the British will be celebrating in Philadelphia streets. Then tonight's the time to strike. General Washington proved the point at Trenton that the British are least on guard when they're toasting their own success. Is your company ready? Ready. Show me the plan again. Yes, sir. Robert brings his men by boat up river to the Springfield Bridge, then marches overland one mile to the barn and awaits. Robert, I'll meet you there at four this morning. Then I return to the hills above town. The British reserves are in Chester. Just before daylight, we'll begin the diversion to keep them occupied. What will that be? A simulated bombardment of town. They'll come after our force, away from you. With all respect, General, your force consists of you and Isak and Henry. Captain, if he says diversion, believe me, a diversion. I'll not argue with success. Go on. When you hear our fire, you attack the barn, catching the garrison before wake up. You hitch the guns and are off down this road and through the tunnel to safety. Meanwhile, after the diversion starts, we slip out, take the short way to the tunnel, and are there to cover your escape. A closely run thing. But if you maintain surprise... One distress, sir. The dragoons, even diverted, they cannot run us, follow us through the tunnel. You have only to pass through. In a second's time, we'll destroy the tunnel and prevent pursuit. Mm -hmm. General, I'm sure you can explain how a tunnel can be so hastily destroyed. Captain, the truth is, they do it with jaws. Only if you've seen it can you believe it. Captain, I've seen it. <gasps> the general's faith in you shall become mine own. Besides, 18 guns, that's worth some risk. Make us an army again. Then I'll start for home. No, I do not understand. You told me that young Larkin headed for Springfield, yet this courier 
Reports him returning from Philadelphia. I'm begging your pardon, sir. But that's impossible. He must be in error. I trust so. For young Larkin's sake and for yours. Keep an eye on him, Sergeant. I don't want him out of your sight. something. What happens at five? Sunrise. Mm -hmm. So if uh, we lose 30 minutes somewhere along the line, we're going to be doing all of this in broad daylight. Well, it would make it more sporting, wouldn't it? <laughs> just didn't want to miss you. I mean, it's tonight, isn't it? I know, I mustn't ask. It's dangerous for me to know. So be it, I don't know. All the same, if it is tonight, will you take this for luck? Thank you, Bess. Well, I... Did I tell you... I saw General Washington today. He sent you a message. Jeremy Larkin. Yes. He said that the Congress of the United States, wherever they are hiding, thanks you for what you did in the barn. But he said, and these were his very words, the next time Jeremy Larkin kisses you, It's not for the cause, but for himself. I intend to know. Fetch him.
something's gone wrong. I'm going into Chester. Take command, Sergeant. The order stands. No attack until you hear the diversion in town. What if there is no diversion? How long do we wait? Until sunrise, then forget the guns and pull out. I don't like it. Maybe he never got out of the house. What are we to do? Nothing. We must wait. Distinct odor of a plot. And a very good evening to you, sir. family. And by heaven, you shall all pay the price. You have been ranting long enough. What is it you want? What crime? What price? My treason, sir. From one and all. This is madness. Silence. I will not be silent. Now let us understand each other, gentlemen. This is not a court of law. This is an outpost of His Majesty's army, and I am in command. I, gentlemen, am Lord here. It is my belief that there is treason in this room. Now I shall find out what it is by sunrise this morning, or I shall shoot you all. Does that make my position quite clear? Major. I agree we're wasting time. I think I can tell you what you want to know. If you'll make a bargain. It depends. Your terms. My father and my brother know nothing of what I'm about to reveal. Therefore, I'll have your pledge of their safety and immediate release. How gallant, sir. Not so. When you hear the truth, you'll be the first to admit of their innocence. Do I have your pledge? It is you who must gamble, sir. I have all the cards. Very well. For two days, you have been seeking a partisan leader. I am that man. How can I be sure? So I'll simply say again what I said at Chester Creek, that I am Pennsylvania's finest, Captain Yankee Doodle. You have your bargain, sir. Your family is safe and innocent. And you alone shall hang. Maybe if one of us went in. Hang on now. Jeremy's a level head. There's a way out of this. He'll find it. If you have to, these colonials are tiresome breeds. My son, sir, is a uniformed officer in the army of his country. If you kill a brother officer, you kill everything that's decent in yourself. Old man, that matters not to me. 
I need one dead man to buy my passage from this town, and your son's the bird in hand. Take him from me, Sergeant. Sir, would you trade your bird in hand for 20 in the bush? What a determined family this is. If I could find the hiding place of the entire partisan band, would that be worth my brother's life? It might. How would you get such information? Grant me five minutes with my brother, alone. Father's in my care. What the devil are you doing here? The sun is up. Oh, I, I bought you time, Jeremy. My men are lying out there. Stop it and listen. Now, if we're lucky, we'll have both you and the guns. For less than a minute, this building will be bombarded. Now, stay back under cover. In the confusion, make your escape. I'll be around back with horses. Here. Good luck. Unless he's just boasting, I'm afraid he's tricked us all. What? Yes, he says that his men are in those hills right now, and that at any moment there's going to be... the time we'll never get to the tunnel now get in the wagon quick will be through any minute. You better rest here. I wouldn't want to miss the fireworks. I'm sorry, your fortunes of war, Captain.
I must go. Rest easy. Jeremy. I'm so proud. gone at the powder. Someone's in the tunnel. Wait here. There'll be no trap this time. <laughs> I've been given a safe conduct through the lines here, thanks to the kindness 
of a British commander who was greatly relieved that the man called Yankee Doodle will plague him no more. But in that, he is vastly mistaken. For Yankee Doodle still lives, stands here at this grave. He is in all of you brave men. If Robert could hear me now, I believe he would say to me, Father, you understand at last. Yes, Robert, at last. That passion which I call your youth, that fancy which I call treason, it is to my everlasting shame that while you lived, I, I never understood that which you stood so ready to give your life for. Goodbye, my son. Long live the freedom for which you died. Both his sons. Tell him. I can't. If we're to help you again, you know I can't. You will march to 1st Pennsylvania and 18 guns on the line. Eastward, along the German town road. So now we fight. Aye. We fight. I may, I, I hope nothing that I may have said makes you doubt the affection that I have for you. You understand? I understand, sir. Let's go home now. Jeremy, the general who gave me this flag, is that Lafayette? I believe so. My God, he's young. Yes, Father. They all are. This is Bobby Sherman inviting you to be part of something that has become very special to me, the 700 Club. I know it'll be special to you, too. So stay with us. It's next on CBN.